Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning into my podcast. We are now at episode number 20. So this is going to be another solo episode where I'm going to reflect back on the last nine episodes that we've gone through since episode 10 when I did my last solo episode, these reflection ones, and just give you a little bit of a summary of like what's coming up for me. What did I learn? What beliefs did I shift along the way? What are some of the things that I was obsessively curious about myself that I was able to discover along this journey? Because again, to remind you, if you're just watching this episode for the first time and or and you've never seen any other episodes that I've done. The reason why I created this podcast was because I was having all of these amazing conversations with people over the past like two decades, really. And there was many moments where I thought to myself, man, I wish we would have recorded that. Man, I wish other people would be able to hear this, would be able to, you know, go down this journey with me and you know, there, there's so many people that have, have expressed to me because I've spent the better part of like 10 to 15, really like 15 years building my personal brand, building a network, you know, having people paying attention to what I have to say and really being a part of a community with me that I felt it was my responsibility to start to share this stuff. And I can tell you that like now that we're 20 episodes in, it's everything that I thought it was going to be and much, much more. So, you know, when I first started at the start of the year, I was questioning to myself, like, why am I creating a podcast? What is the intention behind this? And then I found my brain going down this path of the marketer in me trying to figure out how it all fit into my business model and what would the funnel look like and what am I going to call it and all that. And of course, we all know that it's now the Trevor Turnbull Show. And it is a platform for me to document my own journey and hopefully have Uh, inspiring, vulnerable, honest conversations with people that then inspire you to be the greatest version of yourself and to explore things that you're curious about, things that you're grateful for, things that you know you need to meet with bravery. So on that note, let me just talk about the episodes that we went through from 11 through to this one here. So I spoke with Zoe Cher, who was somebody that was introduced to me by a mutual contact, a guy by the name of Ron Tite, We had never met before, and Zoe was already a digital marketer in the sense that she she has this digital agency, but she was also a teacher before that, and she went through her own transformational journey to get to the place where she saw how important it was to really elevate the men in the world, and the dads in particular, and she actually had a close friend who owned a blog called Daddy's Digest. And they became friends, and and she eventually engaged in a conversation with them where there was an opportunity to purchase the Daddy's Digest, which, you know, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's like millions of followers on all of their social platforms. It's, It's already got a major footprint in the world of where dads can actually find answers to questions that typically you would only find on a pink women's focused or mom focused blog, right? That was one of the things she talked about. And she just spoke about why it's important to her and why these conversations are important to find answers to. These questions are important to find answers to and how she wants Daddy's Digest to be that source of truth, that place that people can turn to, the dads of the world, to find answers to the hard questions, to be able to you know, create a community where you feel supported, that you feel normal, that you feel elevated, right? So it was really great conversation. I think you're going to really enjoy Zoe. If you haven't checked that one out, definitely go and look at it, listen to it, watch it. Then I talked to Dwight Heck. So Dwight is somebody that I met through a men's group. I do these calls every single Monday. And he was somebody that always stood out to me because he always had an opinion. And it was always coming from a place of um, his truth, right? And really being adamant about the fact that he wanted to be able to speak out loud what he believed to be true and the experiences that he had gone through in his own life. And, you know, growing up in a family where he grew up on a farm and his dad was, you know, successful. And he remembers conversations even as a kid where his dad was talking about million dollar deals and this type of thing. But he remembered that the conversation around finances and just financial literacy was not really talked about that much. And then going through school himself, he saw the disconnect between our education system and then what was actually being taught 
around financials and around how to manage your money and about how to build relationships, focus on relationships as opposed to skills and tactics and that type of thing, right? It's really about just being um, tuned into yourself and actually developing these core skills that we need as human beings. So we had such a great conversation and, and Dwight is a, he's just such a vulnerable, honest guy that I know that anybody that watches that, it's really going to land with you. Like you, ju- you can just feel the energy from this guy. And that was such a fun conversation to have. So go check that one out as well. Nick Cavuto was my next interview as well. So Nick, I got connected to through a few mutual, mutual contacts, but we were kind of, you know, both really putting content out in the world and supporting others to be able to do the same, tell their stories, create micro content, that type of thing. And we first got connected that way because we saw an opportunity to do business together, or at least I saw an opportunity to biz- do business with him. And then as I got to meet this guy and, and listen to him talk and see how he his presence and just the way that he acts as a guide with the high achieving entrepreneurs that he works with, and it's just his overall commitment level to, you know, a greater purpose and and to you know helping elevate the entrepreneurs of the world to be able to create impactful change. I was like, man, I got to get this guy on an interview. And it did not disappoint. We actually kind of danced all over the place with a whole bunch of conversations, but it was just such a perfect conversation. And one where I think anybody that's meeting Nick for the first time, you're going to feel this from him. You're going to feel this like, whoa, like there's something about this guy. And I have no doubt that that Nick and I will continue to be a part of each other's lives in the in the future to come. Um, just because there's so many things that we're aligned on and there's so many missions that we are committed to that are that are on the same path. So we're gonna find a way to work together. Um, so stay tuned for that. You know, like I'll be looking back on this one day and going, like, look at what we created together. Nick's that kind of guy. And uh, and I want you to meet him. So go listen to that one. Uh, the next interview that I did, of course, was with Di Manuel and Nick Wood. So these are two guys that co-founded these men's group. Uh, calls that I attend on a weekly basis. And that was my first two-person interview. So with me interviewing two people, which actually went off without a hitch, you know, like they're they're just both so, you know, fluid in the way that they communicate their mission and their vision that it was just such a, um, you know, insightful conversation about what ultimately drove the two of them to come together to join forces, to create this space for men to show up and just be themselves, to speak their truth, to be heard, to be seen, and to learn how to be a great man, right? Which doesn't mean that they're trying to create a place where people can become superhuman because, in fact, that's one of the things that we talked about is that we have this narrative in society and even these pressures or these outside images around athletes or biohacking our bodies or anything like that, that that say that like we need to be superhuman. But the truth is, is that we need to be human first and we need to be able to tap into our emotional side and not be afraid to show it. And that vulnerability is strength. And we talked about all these topics and just the space that they've created. It's had a tremendous impact on me and my life. Uh, it was a place, a space that I didn't know that I was looking for until I found it. And I think anybody that can resonate with just that statement right there, you need to go listen to that interview. And then I encourage you to sign up for one of these calls uh, and join in. Uh, There's ones that happen at different time zones, so they happen all over the world. There's people from all over the world that are there, different ages, different races, different everything. It's a really um, amazing diversity and, and mix of people and an incredible space. So I invite you to come in. And if you don't know where to go find it, just reach out to me and I'm happy to point you in the right direction. Uh, Jeff Swan was the next person that I spoke to. And Jeff is somebody that I just got introduced to like a year ago. And he's in the sales space. So very similar to the career path or the professional path that, that I'm in and have been in for the last like 18 years. And the first time that we talked, again, it was one of those ones where you get introduced by somebody where they say, the two of you have to meet. Like there's just a there's a destiny to the two of you meeting and you're going to become friends instantly. And that was the case with Jeff. And he spoke about um, you know, his childhood and how he actually went through some really tough times as a kid, but how he's actually able to see the duality in it and the be grateful in the fact of those experiences and how it's shaped who he is today. And just the reflection of like both of us have young kids 
and we're married and we live in the Okanagan, this beautiful place here. And we have every opportunity to just work ourselves to the bone and to be trapped behind our computers and and know that we can hustle our way to success, but that we're both very aware of the fact that that's not what we're looking for and that there's a better way and that there's actually financial abundance and relationship abundance by actually slowing down and really tapping into, you know, your own ability to just be consciously aware of what's going on around you and to, and to really go deep on relationship building. This is something that Jeff really advocates for in the way that he trains working with sales development reps, business development reps, that type of thing. Uh, so just another really great human being that uh, I think you're going to enjoy meeting. And then I spoke with Brian Bogert. Brian is, I don't know how to even explain this guy. He's such a powerful human being. He has a story that he shared about um, being a young kid and going through a horrific accident and almost losing his arm and how that became a catalyst, a driver, a trigger for him to really live his fullest life and then to commit to supporting a billion souls to be able to do the same, to elevate, to live their greatest life as well. So we spoke a little bit about his journey. We also talked about just that and what he does in his day-to-day with his work. But the part that I really enjoyed about our conversation was speaking about his relationship with his wife, because I heard him record a video. He recorded a video with his wife uh, around January of this year. And I was, I remember I was in an airport and I was listening to this and I was like, whoa, these two just flipped the camera on and spoke from the heart. They spoke the truth about their relationship, which was not all perfect. Like, I'm going to tell you, it was not perfect. But they were willing to lean in. They were willing to do the work together. They were willing to accept each other for who they were and to align on a collective vision that even since that interview that I listened to in January has come so much further, right? It's like the conversation that we had, he shared actually where him and his wife are at right now in their relationship with their family, the challenges, the the excitement, the successes, everything in between, and just so inspiring. Him and Nick, actually, Nick Cavuto, uh, the quotables that I pulled out of those, and you'll see them in the actual episodes on my website where I pull out the quotes that people are saying. Like, man, I had like, I could write a book just with the quotes that are coming out of the first 20 episodes of the 19 episodes that I've published so far. Definitely go check that episode out with Brian. The next episode that I had was with uh, Caduce. Uh, Caduce was somebody that is my angel's angel. So I don't know, it, that won't make any sense to anybody, but I am here and doing what I'm doing right now as a part, like Caduce had a piece in that. We had never met before, but he created a ripple effect by enrolling Lewis Howes into a program that was about leadership and just stepping up and stopping playing small and addressing the underlying root causes of why we hold ourselves back and stepping into greatness. And he became an inspiration for Lewis to obviously go on to launch his podcast, The School of Greatness. Uh, I think it was already underway, but you know he really like helped him elevate it to the next level. And then of course, Lewis enrolled me into the same program. So Caduce has created this ripple effect And he has an incredible background and story as the host of TRL, Total Request Live on MTV, back when they used to do it actually live in studio in Times Square in New York. So he was, you know, he brought Kanye West onto the show for the first time. He's got all these incredible stories of being a celebrity, essentially. And now he's committed to helping people understand that the amount of followers and the likes and the shares that you get on the content you produce does not dictate your worth. It's actually not the thing that is the most important thing that we should be striving for. And Caduce supports people around this, uh, down this journey, because of course, this is a real thing in today's society that, you know, we've seen documentaries like The Social Dilemma that talks about just the the psychological aspects of uh, social media and what it's doing to us as a society, what it's doing to our children and the world that it's creating And he's really an advocate for the idea that like human connection is never been more critical now and in our, into our future. And he's, he's a conduit to that. He is a voice for that. And somebody that um, I just knew I wanted to interview so that I can introduce you to him because 
he's going to create a ripple effect on that, just like he did for me and like he did for Lewis. Uh, the next two interviews that I did were with um, uh, Cyrus Foote and Dave Muntner. So Cyrus is another guy that I met in the men's group that I'm in. And I just remember hearing him speak uh, on a couple of the different calls. And I was like, this guy's interesting. He's living in a boat right now. And he also spoke about Costa Rica. I heard him a few times say like, hey, guys, if you need any advice on Costa Rica, let me know because I live there. I got a place there. And I was like, I got to get on a call with this guy. So we did. We chatted first. And um, and then I started hearing about his passion around climate change and sustainability. And this came from the, the underlying root of him being a sea captain. Like he's been the captain of a boat or multiple boats for like 18 years of his life, even longer, I think. And he's currently on a boat. He's actually... He works, he, he he is the captain of this big yacht that is stuck in the harbor in New Zealand and can't leave because if he leaves, he can't come back and then therefore he loses his, his uh, employment and it's just such a crazy story. But he talked, we talked about like him sailing through these um, Pacific gyres, I think they're called, like these big plastic um, wastelands out in the ocean and just how incredibly sad it is and why it's driving him to create awareness around this and some of the initiatives that he has going on that are helping create change and creating impact on that very specific topic. So uh, just another really incredible conversation and another incredible man that I want to introduce you to. And then, of course, last but not least was Dave. Dave Muntner. So Dave, Dave helped me actually step outside of the limiting belief thoughts that I had in my head, head like three, four years ago when I finally decided to tell my story, when I finally decided to speak to somebody about my journey and the fact that, you know, I grew up as this hockey player and then I lost my identity when I was no longer a hockey player and just all of the amazing skills that I learned in that journey. And that's just one piece of it, of course, you know, but like leadership and, you know, how to, uh, and teamwork and that type of thing. Cause for the longest time, I, I was this humble Canadian from the prairies that grew up as a hockey player and now did some online stuff. And like, I was definitely creating a personal brand up until the point I met David, but I had never really stepped into speaking my truth. I had never really told my story. And David is a copywriter, but he's also this spiritual guide, this visionary, conscious, collective consultant. <laughs> I'm going to butcher all these words, but... He's somebody that just knows how to ask the right questions to extract your true story and then shape it for you and then present it back to you where you go, that is me, or that's at least who I believe that I am inside, but I've never communicated out to the world. He's one of the most talented, um, insightful people that I've ever met in my life. And I'm actually working with him right now. I've hired him again to help me with just the positioning and the messaging and the, and the vision and the mission and the purpose around some work that I'm, and, and, a, and a program and a community and a space that I'm creating with Danielle Grant that I can't wait to launch that out into the world. But David's supporting us on that. And there's nobody in the world that I'd, I'd want to do that work with. And uh, he's such an interesting dude. I think you're going to find that one uh, both insightful and incredibly funny too. So yeah, that's the last nine episodes. And man, these people that I've met on my journey, and I've only introduced you to a handful of them so far, right? There's so many more, and I actually have, you know, 15 more episodes or so recorded as of the time of this one that I'm still going to be releasing. And I've reached out to a number of new people, both people that you've referred me to. I've, I've been hearing from people saying like, wow, well, the podcast is, you know, I really enjoyed episode six or whatever it is. And they're like, you should really talk to so-and-so. So now I'm, I'm building this list of like, who do I need to talk to? Who is going to help me on my journey to become the greatest version of myself? Who has a story to tell that is vulnerable, that is honest, that is the truth, that's going to help one person be able to see something different, to be able to think something differently, think differently in their life, and step into that next level of consciousness to help elevate the rest of the world? We're going through a crazy time right now, obviously, politics, health-wise, travel restrictions, can't go to restaurant, all of this stuff. And I'm feeling it just like everybody else, but I'm actually feeling this calmness though too, knowing that I'm taught, the people that I'm talking to and the people I'm surrounding myself with, they're leveling up. They're not 
staying where they are. They're not, certainly not descending. They're actually stepping to those next levels of consciousness and they're creating unlimited possibilities. And that just excites the shit out of me. Like, I love it. And this is why I decided to do this podcast. So I can say that I'm more pumped now than when I even started all of this. And I can't wait for you to check out the next coming episodes. So thank you so much for being here. If you watch this all the way through, thank you so much for listening to my message, being a part of this journey. And please do reach out to me. Let me know what you thought of all of the episodes so far. Uh, Leave me a review on the different podcasting channels. Leave some comments on YouTube. The more that I can get the message out of what I'm sharing and what I'm hearing from my guests, the more I'm going to be able to create that ripple effect as well. And that's really the underlying purpose of all of this is to create impact and change in a positive way in the world. So uh, thanks again for watching. And until next time, be grateful, be curious, and be brave. We'll see ya. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Trevor Turnbull Show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider subscribing on my YouTube channel and on your favorite podcast platform and leave me a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now, until next time, remember, today is a beautiful day of opportunity. Trust that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. So be grateful, be curious, and be brave. 